Look at all you guys laughing, huh? What did I draw this short straw, Mac? McClellan turned it down, so I got to do this. But uh, boy, what a great evening, George, and your uh, your entertainment staff, the girls, and all the guys singing. Fantastic job. And what a uh, what a heartfelt uh, tribute to our dear friend Dave Semenko by Dave Hunter. Hunts, that was fantastic. And I see, uh, I see Joey Moss is in the house, which we're all excited about. Joey, good to see you. Um, the greatest game in the world, the greatest team in the world, and the greatest fans. I mean, coming, you know, coming in here tonight, I brought a couple of buddies from Toronto and uh, they're massive Leaf fans slash Oiler fans, and I just wanted to get them to get the feel of what it's like to be in, in Alberta and, and be an Oilers fan. And they're just blown away by the amount of people here. And it's, uh, it's fantastic. You know, I was looking, uh, looking at those tapes earlier, and first star would be Kevin Lowe for the All Ugly Sweater Award. I don't know what he had on in that Boston Pizza commercial, but, you know, look at, looking back and, 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 and seeing those uh, fitness tests that Slots like to do. I think that he was the the leading guy on that, and you know I couldn't help but chuckle when I saw Gretz with all hooked up at the end doing the VO2 test. But you know a funny story came to mind. Slots came in and he always likes to motivate us in different ways, and you know he said I don't know what's going on here, but you know there's a guy in Calgary that did 400 sit-ups, did 250 push-ups, exaggerating a little bit, and about uh, 40 or 50 chin-ups. We got a guy on our team that did three pull-ups, <laughs> zero bench press, and uh, seven sit-ups. And Gretz piped up, well, trade me for him then. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the end of that, but you know, you know the 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 beauty, the beauty of today is and, and this weekend is, and we're very very proud of it, being voted the greatest team. I mean, there were some great teams out there. You know, Dennis is here, a New York Islander who we respect at times ten. Those great Montreal teams, but according to the people, we were voted the greatest team, and we're very very proud of that. And we're also very proud of Lanny and uh, and Tim and Vernie coming in which is the greatest rivalry in hockey as far as we're concerned and anybody. Those games were unbelievable. And uh, having, having them be able to bury the hatchet and come in and tell some great, great stories. And, you know, Dennis Potvin's here, who was an idol of mine growing up. And every time we played the Islanders, I, I watched Dennis and I wanted to be somewhat some of his style and, and the strengths that he was. He's a true champion. We're going to hear from him later. And of course, uh, of course, Mike Keenan. And uh, just one more quick story. You can't help but love the Sutter passion. You, you, you just can't. I mean, Brian and his brothers were those guys that just led the game and what the game's all about. And, you know, my dear old dad, who's passed away, used to say every year in the Hall of Fame, when they have a builder's category. The only person that should be in there is Mr. and Mrs. Sutter <laughs> for, for building such beautiful kids. But in, in moving forward, I know what I'm good at and I know when I need help. And tonight I need help and I'm gonna welcome out Edmonton's very own John Shannon and we're gonna have some fun. Cop, oh, I gotta tell you, you got drafted, when did you get drafted? Barry Fraser found you, drafted you, made you a star of the Edmonton Oilers. You didn't speak for the first three seasons here, and now you got your own talk show. <laughs> what is that? Well, first, first three seasons. Uh, you no. <laughs> it's amazing how these microphones work. You have to speak into them. The first three seasons, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of talk by any of us, because no. the most articulate guy we had on our team was Kevin Lowe. And dear old Kev never met a mic he didn't like. <laughs> but he, uh, he, 
he respectfully so was uh, was our spokesperson and did a great job. But you know, I often get asked about this team, John. Yeah. And it's very simple for me. We had great players. We had Hall of Fame players. We had the greatest player of all time. And that's what that made that team special. But what really bonded us was the guys that are here tonight. Billy Carroll, Mark Napier coming in with Stanley Cup experience. Uh, Donnie Jackson, of course, Cement, Hunts, Lummer, Fogey, our, uh, our leader. And, uh, of course, who cannot laugh at that tape of Kevin McClellan, even punch him when he's on the ice. But uh, those are the guys. Patty Hughes, we're going to talk earlier. Mark Kruzelinski, who... You know, came to the Oilers, a big, big trade for Glenn to do that, uh, trading a hero the year before Kenny Linson, but all the guys here in Pose and, and Willie and all those guys made it special. Okay, this is your show. Who's your guest? Come on now. Well, who we got? Okay, we got Pat Hughes, Essa Tikkanen, and number 17, Yari Curry. Come on up, boys. I'm not sure if there's a translator in the crowd, but we got tick here and you never know. Those are politically incorrect things to say now I'll in get 2018. You 10 games, but I'll take the 10 games, that's okay. <laughs> so, Yari, who happens to be, according to Tick, told me earlier, probably the second best Finn sitting on this couch right now, but that's okay. I, I had the. Uh, I had the pleasure of living with Yari for a year, my first year, and it was fun. I take most of the credit to how well he played. Most games I was tired because I cooked and cleaned. And Yari, kept, going. and Yari kept saying, I no understand. I no understand. <laughs> all right, all right, Yari, let's be honest. Is this, is this fake news or is this the real thing? Um. Goff was supposed to take care of me for the first couple of years, but I ended up taking care of him. Grocery store, paying the bills, which you still owe me a few money. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was very important for me to start my career here with the Goff, you know, and uh, Gretz and Kevin was uh, our neighbors, come from the Europe, really not ex know what to expect, but uh, these guys really helped me a lot. Of course, uh, I had Matty Hack, my Risto Siltan, and lived close together, helped me out. Too. But um, what a fun time we had. So let me, what kind of advice when this guy came? By the way, he didn't, I used to think he always wore number 10. He wore 14 that first year when you won the Cup in 85, because Pozar wore 10. What kind of advice did you give Tick about playing in Edmonton and when to speak and when not to speak? I didn't do too much advice. You know, Tick, he was ready right after bat. Uh, he brought a lot of energy to our team. You know, he's a talented hockey player. You can put him in the ice. If you're shorthanded, if you power play, you need a call, whatever. And what a great hockey player and a great team and a friend. Thank you, Ari. <laughs> I'll give you a hundred bucks later. <laughs> but I remember the first time I coming in Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs. I fly Helsinki to Chicago and uh, see the Chicago Oilers semifinals and the Oilers won. After that, we go to Philadelphia and uh, I never expect to play any games. I was ready to, you know, sit in a stands and a cheering boys. And uh, after first game against the Philadelphia Oilers last and uh, we go to morning skates and uh, Glenn said, say, you coming morning skate and uh, skating there like a uh, you go to play. So finally he's called Yari and me. He's, Glenn said, I say, Yari, hey, tell him he's going to play tonight with the Wayne and Yari, you, the game. I say, Wayne who? <laughs> and there the start, and like you say, in post certain was number 10 and I was number 14 and our trainer, Sparky, saw in my name in the one, one by one and uh, I have a, Somebody's gloves, skates uh, was mine, but uh, here I start the NHL and uh, was something dream. I was a little boy in the Finland. I, I like to play NHL one day and that happened in the Stanley Cup final. And uh, I was like a hard, hard member in the Oilers and that was beautiful. 
think uh, I think the long and the short on that is move the puck. I'm open. But uh, you know, you know, Glenn had a vision in the early '80s, wanting us to play a modified European style. And at that point, you know, Trupe and a lot of guys wanted to stay away from the European players. Um, they were criticized for certain things, not wanting to win, couldn't wait for the season to get over. But you know, we we were blessed on this team. We had a great scout and Ossie Vanden with Yari and. Uh, Risto originally, and of course uh, Willie and uh, Tick, and didn't take a chance on those guys, but just knew they were a great, great hockey player and good people, and uh, we were better for it having you guys on the team. Now, I'll tell you what, Glenn also traded for Pat Hughes, and Pat came from an organization that knew how to win as well, maybe a little earlier. They were a bit of a dynasty in Montreal. What was it like coming here, and how was it different than Montreal, Pat? Well, I had a stop in between. Um, Montreal, obviously, during the uh, late 70s, had, had a pretty good run of it with their four in a row. Um, some of the greatest players ever to play the game. I got traded to Pittsburgh. Um, you know, I went, was going backwards in a hurry. Uh, I think we were in 18th place there. Um, I, we moved up a couple of slots, and then a year later, I got traded to Edmonton. And I, I think we're probably in 14th place at that point. Come to uh, Edmonton, and Edmonton's in 18th place. And I say, holy smokes, I'm really going backwards again. Until I got on the ice at uh, U of A's arena for our first practice. And, you know, the pace was uh, faster than the uh, Montreal Canadiens of years gone by, and I knew we were going places. Absolutely. And, uh... Another thing a lot of people probably don't know about Husey, but his brother-in-law is Mark Napier. And I know when we traded for Napes, Husey was all over it, but he wanted to keep bragging rights in the house and have more Stanley Cups than Mark. But he knew by getting uh, Mark to our team, it would increase our chances to win a Stanley Cup. And, you know, one other story, uh, Gretz missed a game, and the city was probably all worried about what we are going to do about waiting in the lineup. And Husey said, we'll be okay. And he went out and got five goals. By the way, we should probably, I know this is Koff's show, but we should probably take some time and introduce some of the other guys to come, come on up. Yaroslav Pozar, come on up. Willie Lidstrom, come on up. Dave Lumley, Larry Melnick, come on up here. This is not the quickest line change in the history of the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> so, I, I couldn't help but I love, I love Larry Melnick to death. And came here and took my seat and actually met his wife. Uh, I gotta kind of tell this story beautiful lady a couple of years ago and I said wow the one that got away what are you doing with him <laughs> beautiful beautiful Edmonton girl but uh, you know we're sitting here we got Lummer who was uh, a great order um, scored one of the biggest goals for us to clinch our first Stanley Cup amongst uh, amongst other things uh, open net I should say Amongst other things, showed a beautiful dance and uh, scored a bunch of goals in a row. And uh, is living back here in Edmonton. Twelve, Twelve games in a row, by the way. Who's counting? Who's well, counting? Glenn Sather finally came to his senses and put Gretz on my line. <laughs> so, Lumber, what's it feel like being back in Edmonton? What's it feel like being back in Edmonton? Well, I've been here for since 2010, I guess. I was down in Texas for 10 years and... Uh, Run into my old buddy, Billy Carroll, just to get the numbers straight. I wore number 20 most of my career here. And then when I was picked up by, in the interleague draft by Hartford, Billy Carroll came here from the Islanders and they gave him number 20. Well, this is a lesson in not burning your old bridges because I said that when I got picked up by Hartford, I had an Euler tattooed, an Euler logo tattooed on my butt and I was always gonna be an Edmonton Euler. Well, about four months into the season, like Hartford was just, excuse me, I just hated 
And I let it be known, and I, Rod, I don't know if I'm talking at a school here, but I, I let Hartford know I was gonna retire. So they put me on waivers, and because I came from Edmonton, I got a phone call from Rod Phillips, of all people, saying, Lummer, you're coming back. You never seen a guy go from so low to so high in your life knowing I was coming back. And Billy Carroll actually off offered to give me the number 20 back, and a nice guy that I am. No, no, don't worry about it. Well, 30 years later, I'm kicking my ass. Why? Number eight doesn't suit me. I want that 20 back, Carrots. You know what? We're, we're getting close to time here. I just want a quick thought from Willie and from Yarrow about being back in Edmonton and being part of these Oilers. Willie, you first. Well, first of all, I want to thank the management for the trade they made in Winnipeg to get to this team. I knew at that time we were a winning team. And uh, we went to the final the first year when I got here. We lost against the Islanders. And uh, that's what the guy said before. We, had, we learned the first year. I knew the, 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 near, the year after we were going to win. And that's what we did. Yarrow, your thoughts about coming back and being here for this celebration? Uh, for me, it's very, very hard to speaking with you because I don't speak very good English, but I don't want to try to say something. In 1982, when the World Championship in Finland come to me, Barry Fraser, and say to me, you want to go to play in Edmonton? I say, oh, why not? You know? <laughs> I, you know, you know, at that time in my country, Communist Cameroon, I don't know nothing about the NHL, about Edmonton Oilers, about Gretzky, and nobody. I say, okay, I go, because I've been telling you all the time, it's rules. You, you, I have go to play outside from my country, it's 30, 30 years old, 150 games in national team, then I have chance to go to play outside to uh, no communist, but different country, Canada, America, or Germany, doesn't matter, you know. And I say, okay, I go to play there. And I must say, thank you, Barry Fraser and Glenn Trader come to Prague and sign contract with company who export players to everywhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not to me, you know, it's just I sign, but it's my, my sign like small one, you know. And I pay two taxes. I pay taxes here, I pay taxes in Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's for me, it's very nice. I go to Canada, but but for me, it's a big problem in the language, you know. I've been 30 years, brain is old, you know. What can I do with my brain, you know? <laughs> I come to the airport, the very Fraser wait me there with, I think, with Paul Koff, no, with some players, with that captain. <laughs> Fogelin, Lee Fogelin, wait for me for big. Big truck, I have maybe 10 suitcases or 20 suitcases because I go to Edmonton, you know. I come up out and I have only two suitcases, one wife, one daughter. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way. When we do this when we do the show about the 87 team, coffee talk is gonna be replaced by Yarrow Talk. And thank you for Paul Coffey in this final edition of his best talk show ever, Coffee Talk.